Well, Jared, you know, I'm thinking today, I don't know, I've been in the podcasting mood yeah. all damn morning, and I'm thinking today maybe we change it up and go sans song. How do you feel about that? <laughs> what? I know, right? Okay, fuck it. Let's, no, no, let's no we could go sans song. I'm more shocked that you're saying this. I know, right? You're usually the one that uh, needs the song. Doesn't even know how our podcast works with this I mean, no, not at all. <laughs> Do, wait, we have a podcast? Uh, if I don't hear the song, there's no podcast, Jared. Go. It's clear. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make me spit my, spit my sparkling water all over our audio equipment. This uh, is a great start. We can get a sand song. Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. We are here recording episode 116. And you all have been waiting, wondering, thinking, where is Chad going? for his new adventure. And today, you are going to find out. And Jared has prepared some good questions. I'm sure he'll have me a little befuddled at some point with his questions, as he usually does. But I'm looking forward to my new adventure coming up at the end of August. And uh, hopefully, we'll motivate some of you to get out there and try some new things as well. So we're looking forward to bringing you this episode. We are here in the Azulmu Studios. Jared uh, Smooth talked his way back in here, and I'm happy he's back, I'm not going to lie. So without further ado, my good buddy Jared, what's going on, Jared? Listen, I'm a professional, I get what I want. Spread it <laughs> What I want is for you guys to follow us on Instagram, Untranslatable Podcast, Twitter, Untranslatable One, the number one. You can email us, untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com, and on any of these places, feel free to slide into those DMs, get into that inbox, give us some untranslatables, which are idioms, sayings, proverbs axioms that don't really make any sense if you uh translate them directly but when someone says it to you and you speak that language oh boy do you know what they mean you can also really spread a little love spread a little love and give us those five star reviews on itunes and or stitcher the first person to get us to review number 50 gets a free t-shirt there we go boom Mm -hmm. he said it it's been put out into the universe, so get ready, people. Another thing Chad said that was put out into the universe is that this is episode 16. He's wrong. It's episode 17. 117. Didn't I say 117? Nope. But that's okay. Oh, whoop, my bad. My You're bad, just in the zone. I guess so. <laughs> so excited. I guess so. That is true. So um, what is this big news that we've been waiting to hear about? So, Jared, the big reveal is I will be heading to China come August to work as an English teacher at a university over there. And I will be living in Jinan, China, which is in the eastern part of China, about an hour and a half, two hours south of Beijing by Mm -hmm. high-speed railway. And I will be teaching with other uh, Westerners, I believe, in the English department, but also working with some Chinese nationals at the university as well. And I can can tell you I am so excited. It's going to be quite the adventure. I've never been to Asia before, let alone mainland China. So I'm excited, a little scared, and we'll talk about that later, but it'll it'll be a fun trip. First off, <laughs> congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Um, well, was it a harrowing process, or was it like a... You know, the, well, the process was a little complicated, because what most people tend to do is they go directly to a university or an after-school language school or something like this i figured you know what that's too easy Mm -hmm. i don't want one boss you betcha i want three potential bosses Mm -hmm. so i'm going to apply for a a program it's similar to the fulbright in that it is funded by the department of state and it is called the english language fellowship so basically the fulbright is uh, available for anyone with a bachelor's degree this program is available for anyone with a master's in tesol oh so it's like the I wouldn't say the next step up because I don't want to take away from the Fulbright experience, Mm -hmm. but I would say at least in terms of qualifications, it's definitely another rung. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm looking forward to it. I'll have 20 other um, colleagues of mine around mainland China who are also a part of the English Language Fellowship and uh, could not be more excited to meet them. And some fun news, Jared, I will actually be heading to Washington uh, for our first orientation to meet all these people. When's the? Uh, have you been to Washington D.C. before? I have. I've been there. I think three or four times. It's a great city. Sadly, our program is very jam packed, so there probably won't be too much time for uh, sightseeing, lollygagging, or enjoying ourselves too much outside of the orientation. But I think it'll be really helpful, especially for all of us first year fellows who have, you know, who really 
are kind of new to everything and need to understand what the expectations are and everything like that. So, so this is five days long. Yes. Now that's quite the orientation. Mm -hmm. I've been to a lot of schools, camps, jobs, and I've had some tough orientations, some exhausting orientations, but a five day or that's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. What kind of stuff do you do in a five day orientation? Do you know what the agenda would be? I think you can take a guess what the first day would be like. Um, beauty pageant. Yes. AKA icebreakers. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Lots of icebreakers. And then on Monday night, we will have... You guys aren't all going to the same place, right? Well, okay. So there's, I believe there's about, there's over 130 of us all together, mm -hmm. but these are going in a hundred different countries around the world. Okay. So there's so, some overlap. Yes. So, so I will meet all the other fellows who are going to China on Monday night, the first night of the orientation. We're all going to go out and have dinner together. Mm. So it'll be nice because there will be first years and also some that are returning. Uh, you can oh. do it for two full years. So you get some insights. Exactly. And you okay. better believe I'm bringing my pen and my paper <laughs> and I'm going to have plenty of questions and uh, stuff. Turkey. That's for sure. So, yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. I, I, I don't thrive in those situations, believe it or not, Chad. Hard to believe, Chad. Um, but since I've started a new job and I'm trying to progress in my career and just personally, I now try to take it on myself to be a little bit more quicker to open conversations, a little quicker to um, you know initiate conversations and not just have people come to me. Because especially professionally, where you sort of have to, and not really in a bad way, but you sort of have to you know, think about what you say and sort of you, you have a slight sort of professional filter to you if you're not naturally a professional person. Mm -hmm. um, it does take some some skill to to navigate that. And, and it's something that I would like to uh, to improve on. Absolutely. Yeah, it's important. And I think I was lucky enough where last year in the Czech Republic, I was able to polish and sharpen some of those skills mm -hmm. as well. Because uh, and for anyone out there who is thinking about a career as a teacher abroad, my piece of advice uh, to you all out there is really find out very quickly how you can be of assistance to all the other teachers and the students, right? For me, I felt like sometimes I was a walking dictionary of American culture, which is kind of difficult because, you know, I'm a middle class white dude that grew up in a little farm town outside mm -hmm. of Ann Arbor, Michigan. So I can't represent, you know, the Latino people growing up in you know, Texas or New Mexico or Arizona or, or wherever, it doesn't really matter. Or, you know, the black people in the States, you know, I, I've never lived their experiences. So it's you difficult betcha. to, you know, kind of burden and have all that on your shoulders. But mm -hmm. I would try to give them different viewpoints, right? I would have students ask me, what are your thoughts on Trump? Or, or what does America think about Trump? And there, you know, I think if you've listened to our podcast, it's probably pretty obvious we're not we're not the most pro Trump here. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of Americans who are pro Trump. They got elected. Clearly, someone likes them, right? And so, so it's important to keep that in mind and figure out, you know, in what ways can what can you bring to the table that, you know, someone, you know, a, a local maybe doesn't have the experience or the expertise. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It will be a new challenge, and we'll talk more about that later. Okay, so we got past. Uh Hello, nice to meet you games. What else? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, right. So we have... Uh, the because I, the reason I ask this is because you say that there's not enough time to like a lollygag, but I feel like an important part of this entire sort of orientation process is uh, you getting to know your colleagues. Well, sure. And I guess, I guess maybe I phrase things incorrectly because there are some like coffee breaks in mm -hmm. between and stuff like that where <laughs> I'm sure you could do some small talk and some chit chat. And, and I believe we're done... We're done, I think, at like 5 or 7 p.m. every night. So really, there, there actually There's is time. plenty to of time to lollygag. lollygag. <laughs> right. But, you know, Jared, um, I don't know about you, but, mm -hmm. you know, although I'm a fairly social guy, my social battery, as I like to call it, only lasts so long. Interesting. Right? I didn't know that about yeah. you. Yeah. And so there are certain times where, you know, if I spend time with people for... When I was working in the Czech Republic, I loved my colleagues. I loved my students. Mm -hmm. But after work, sometimes I would just feel very socially drained because... I had talked to so many people throughout the day, right? And and so I would just go home and play my guitar. And so I will be bringing a traveler uh, guitar with me, of course, to DC, and we'll be uh, picking and grinning mm -hmm. while I'm doing that during the yes. evening. So looking forward to it. Uh, but yeah, so to answer your question though, so first day it seems like it's more icebreakers. The second day is a lot of more administrative stuff. 
talking mm. about uh, do, oh like they i was gonna say you could sign papers all day long no, no i think it's more i mean they've already we've already signed all the documentation and paperwork it's right. more just going over all the different stuff right um so yeah and then i think some of it will also be different expectations and stuff i actually have to look more clearly at the program mm. schedule um that's a lot of orientation it is it is uh i'm excited for you I'm excited for the untranslatable podcast. It'll mm-hmm. be an adventure for both of us. I'm going to live vicariously through you. Um, but we'll get back to that. We'll talk about all your preparation that you've done, all your sort of fears, what you're excited mm-hmm. for, uh, what you know about your city later. But for now, we can... Uh, Spread a little love. Let's do it. And I have two shout-outs today. Uh, one is a very heartwarming one. One's kind of a goofy one. Okay. But hey, we love Goofy here. At least I do. Can't speak for Jared, but I know I love Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my first one is, you know, we are starting to come uh, close to the school year again. I know it's hard to believe. It's already August, people. Oh, Where my did gosh. Go? It's crazy. I've been having so much fun over summer. Now right. I got to go back you to go school. Go back to school, Jared. I know, right? <laughs> but uh, so what's interesting is, so the first week of school, obviously, can be very difficult for a lot of children, especially long- younger children or those to a new school district who are faced with the daunting prospect of having to make new friends. You know, and that's not really easy, Chad. right? <laughs> well, what's interesting though, Jared, well, maybe not even interesting, this is kind of obvious, but developmentally speaking, a child's ability to socialize and build friendships is just as important as reading, writing, and other skills mm-hmm. learned in school. For sure, for sure. Which I would agree. Uh, but so what's really great though is uh, Blake Rajon, who is six, Asked Ray his, John is his last name. Uh, That's great. Ryan, maybe R A J A H N. Yeah, know. I don't know, but Ray John sounds awesome. It does, doesn't <laughs> it? Uh, he is six years old, and he asked his mom to make him a shirt that read, uh, "I will be your friend for the first day of school." Good luck, and buddy. I think it's great. Jared's probably, as usual, Jared loves to <laughs> shit on my shout outs here, trying to bring the positivity to the universe. But many, I think this is such a wonderful gesture. You know, he could have. He could have worn any shirt, could have worn a mm-hmm. badass shirt with a T-Rex on it or whatever. Cool Woodstock shirt, although he probably wouldn't wear that. But hey, <laughs> uh, I don't think little kids know what Woodstock is. Maybe I mean, they do. I, 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 I just like it because it looks cool. That's true. And you gave it to me. That so is it's true. Um, a little early, easy. That's right. That's right. Oh, wow. That's how you know you're back. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but yeah, so I think this is just a great gesture. And uh, I think any time that children are have these kind of personality traits where they want to mm-hmm. include others is great because, you know, moving to a new school can, can be quite a daunting thing. You know, mm-hmm. you've experienced it, you know, a couple of times. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think you said, uh, when Mick. you went to Dusseldorf, exactly. Mm-hmm. I was he thinking just came about up him. to you. Right. So, yeah, and that made my entire first day a whole lot easier. Right. She couldn't find a shirt that fit him. Why is that thing going out to his knees? Here we go, Jared. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> It's a little big. It's so he can. Sure it's, it's, it's so he can wear it. It's so he can wear it the next couple of years, Jared. Come on now. His yeah, he'll mom's be got the, his first day of college. <laughs> his mom's got the forethought to know that he'll be wearing this more often. But yeah, so I think that's great. So sending lots of love yeah. to Blake Spread and his mom love. who have this awesome T-shirt for his first day of school. So Jared, now here's a good one. So there is a a football team, football club, or soccer club in the UK that they have been dubbed the UK's worst pro (laughs) football or soccer team, and they have ended their 73-match winless streak. Oh, wow. Congratulations. So, and Fort William FC has, uh, they have been suffering uh, minus 221 goal difference last season. 221? Uh, Goal difference. Damn. Yeah, okay. which I, I don't even know how that's possible, but hey. But so what's great, though, is they have ended their 73-game winning, uh, winless streak, stretching back 840 days. Ooh. 840 days. Is that days. like three seasons? Probably like I How many so. seasons is yeah. that? Probably three, maybe even four. Yeah, you're right, because it is probably, probably about four. three years. Yeah. Not so, two years, so two they, and a half so years, So they probably. won, finally, they stormed to victory with a 5-2 win against Nairn County on Wednesday. Man. So I hope those guys are having I a great how time. Narron County's feeling right now. Right, no kidding. <laughs> but bask in the glory, gents, and we're sending some love your way. Yeah, yeah. You betcha. That's hilarious. Well, Jared, the clock beat us to it today, but mm-hmm. I think you still know what time it is. I do. The clock doesn't know that I, ha- I I've harnessed its power within my soundboard. That's right. This is the untranslatable owl. We've got some untranslatables for today. I'm gonna scoot this over so Jared mm-hmm. can't peep and look at what I got coming for him. So, Jared. 
you know, we, we try to bring credible news and things here, but sometimes meme news can be helpful. And I got to say, I was scrolling through Facebook the other day and I found this awesome Bored Panda uh, article. What does it even that mean? Is a bunch of memes of untranslatables. And I saw this and I thought, oh my gosh, this is what we do here. This mm-hmm. is perfect. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and a couple of these I actually knew off the top of my head. One of them was, I, I think... I think it was me that gave it to you. Maybe it was you though. It was the Polish one, not my circus, not or yeah, not my circus, not my monkey, mm, mm-hmm. right? I so I saw that, that and I was like, oh my gosh, here here we are, coming full circle. So I have a couple from Board Panda. My first one for you today is Afrikaans, and it is "ikrap meten kork stoki an lu sebale," which means you're scratching a lion's balls with a short stick. Uh, poke the bear. Yep. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I, sorry, I jumped the gun. This one is. It means to push your luck. Would poking the bear mean push? I think poking the bear is more. You're ag- you're like aggravating somebody. Right. You're yeah. So this you're is right. more. You're pushing your luck. Okay, it's a little different, but yeah. I think if you were to use it, it wouldn't be confusing to you. Right. Oh yeah, that's like a. <laughs> <laughs> this is very technical technological here. That's true. Um, At least my, you got free hands. You got. All that's this true. I love movement. this stand. My first one is. Uh, also came from real world experiences. I'm a big Formula One fan. Shout out to Lewis Hamilton. Got that first place in hung at the Hungarian Grand Prix this morning. But um, I was watching a video with uh, Australian Daniel Ricardo, and I, it was like a YouTube video, and he was being interviewed by a British person, and they were asking about uh, some Australian untranslatables. Oh, cool! And I was I literally got out a pen and paper and wrote yes, it down. Yes, that's awesome. So the one that I chose was Budgie Smugglers. Budgie smugglers. Budgie smugglers. I don't know what a budgie is. Budgie means uh, your gentleman sausage. Oh, oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this hmm? Is this like a promiscuous lady? (laughs) No, but that's hilarious. No, what? It's a little bit more. You wear a budgie smuggler. Oh, it's a jock strap. When you're swimming. Oh, oh, but so it's like a speedo. There you go. Ah, oh, budgie snug. Okay, budgie <laughs> smugglers, not smugglers. smugglers. Okay, yeah, oh, smugglers say, would work too. Though. Did I say snugglers? No, you said smugglers. Oh, okay, I misspoke. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, Jared. Well, you also can call them cock jocks. <laughs> okay, it sounds more British, but all right. Well, yeah, uh, it sounded more Australian when the Australian guy said it. It's like, uh, <laughs> well, here we here we have a special phrase too: the good old banana hammock. Oh yeah, 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 yeah banana yeah. hammock. Yeah. Well, Jared, which I is figured less, uh, which is more PG than the Australian smuggler. Yeah, Australian That's versions. That's fair. That is fair. Well, Jared, I love to test you on your Spanish, so here we go. Okay. Trabajas menos. Que el sastre de Tarzan. Now, hold on. Mm-hmm. Trabajas is to work. Uh-huh. Now, read it over again. I just got excited Trabajas that I actually knew one. menos que el sastre de Tarzan. So, it's you work like... You work less than... Tarzan? Tarzan's tailor. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> you work less than Tarzan's tailor. And so, I, I'll tell you, this would be a good roast, Jared. This would definitely be a good burn. That's hilarious. It just means you're lazy. Yeah, very yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, you work less than Tarzan's tailor. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's interesting that you say that. I have a Spanish one as well next. And it's el que tiene boca se equivoca. Something about a mouth. And it has a mouth equal to what? Whoever has a mouth makes mistakes. Oh, everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, there you go. It's like... Uh, Oh, what's what's the phrase we have? It's it's a bit more vulgar. It's uh, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got them. Yes, mm-hmm. very good. That's yep. a great untranslated. Yep. That is a good one. All right, Jared. I want to give you. Let me find the German one. All right, Jared. Maybe you've heard this one, but I think this one applies very well to our podcast, which is zwei dumme ein Gedanke. <laughs> uh, it's like two idiots, one brain or one thought. Yep. Is it like um? Now, I can't think of what our untranslatable would be, but essentially like the joke of how many blah, blah, blahs does it take that like two... No. Oh, it's mm-hmm. not like two idiots we, we, are still like are so stupid that they... No, no, no. We we do have one, but we say th- we, we say great minds. Oh, great minds think alike? Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes but, sense. But the Germans flip it, right? So we say great minds think alike. Germans take it the opposite route, and two stupid people have the yeah. same thought. 
But yeah, they're very negative, and I, I like that. I like that. And sometimes that's kind of true. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just as equally true on the uh, positive side that two great minds think alike, that two idiots think alike, Oh, too. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. My Without next one is Japanese, and it goes like this. Uh, Tusume no aka wo senjite nomu. And it means to brew and drink the dirt from under someone's fingernails. Oh, that, that just visually is disgusting. Mm-hmm. Brew and drink the dirt from... Oh, is this just like you're getting that dirty laundry? You're getting like the scoop on someone? No, no. Okay. It's actually a very positive th- thing. And so it, to make... Okay, wait. Is it to? Is it like to look at someone for their best regardless of their faults or flaws? Mm, no, 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 okay. no. So let's, for example, you and I do this podcast together. Um, you know, listen... We we both work hard at this, but I think it would be fair to say that I tend to do a little bit more of the work than you 100% do. <laughs> fair to say. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, you're always telling me how amazing I am and how much you love me and and, also and true, how you yeah. wish you had my worth ethic and good looks. And you also tell me that you want to brew and drink the dirt from under uh, my fingernails just to... Uh... Oh, okay. So it's like you want to be like somebody or, or you yeah. aspire to be, be like them. Yeah? You betcha. All right. Yeah. It just means you want to follow someone's example or follow in their footsteps to improve yourself. Okay. Well, great. I got one more for you, Jared. Okay. Another Spanish one. Ooh. And I love this one because it's very visual. Tirar la casa por la ventana. Tirar. I don't know what that means. Tirar. Oh, throw? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the house. What's the end part? Por, por la ventana. La ventana, señor. Throw the house for the window? Throw the house out its own window. Or throw the, the house. Window. So it's like give up or like... Um, no, it's, it's the opposite, I would say. So the, so like you try your hardest or like you do the impossible mm, like no i would say so for example jared say we decide to celebrate before i head off to china mm-hmm. right we're gonna give it our all there you go we're gonna go all go all out go all out okay. throw the house out of its own window i that's, just love that example that's a great untranslatable how's the party we threw the house out of the window yeah. that's so good that sounds yeah. like something my southern family would say right <laughs> gotta add it to the new list <laughs> <laughs> Say it with a southern accent, and you're good to go. Oh my gosh! Well, Jared, should we should we talk about the new adventure now? Is it's a it big time? day. It's a big day. It is. First of all, I'm very glad that we even you know we got you know this was not planned that I would get laid off and move back to Michigan mm-hmm. at essentially within the same within days of you finishing your 10 month rotation in the Czech Republic. Right. But it's very exciting that I'm here, mm-hmm. and it's very exciting that we get to see each other. Uh, at least you know pretty regularly mm-hmm. and um and that we get to experience this stuff together it's i, I you know just because of the f- fact that i have a job we can't do all of our episodes together even though we're cl- rather relatively close to each other mm-hmm. in comparison to before but i think for us to do this episode we had to be in person i mean it's the only way to really experience the uh spread a little love that's happening here because I'm, I'm i'm proud of you thanks buddy i appreciate so, it first off let's talk about where you'll be Okay. So, yeah. So, I will be in... It's called the Shandong Province, Mm -hmm. or Shandong Shen in Chinese. Shen is province? Yes. Okay. Uh And so, uh, Shandong is the province actually where Confucius was born. Mm. So, hoping to come back a wiser man, (laughs) maybe with a cool Confucius-style facial hair. You never know. Slipping on gator piss. Uh, um, But, yeah. So, it's in the kind of eastern part of China, below Beijing. So I'm not too far from Beijing, which is great because Mm -hmm. I'll be living in a third tier city. So first tier would be a city in China that is incredibly large in terms of population. I believe usually over nine or 10 million people. Um, And then the tiers go down by population and things like that. So so my city, I believe, has either around six to seven million people. That's hilarious, by the way. Also, the gaps that, that that's like a small city. Right. But that, it's interesting that the, um, you know, when you first were saying that a second ago, I was assuming that, okay, well, if first tier is nine, how many tiers are there? I think there's, well, let's look because I don't want to give. Because the my wrong first info. thought was, all right, so the highest tier is, you know, let's say nine to 12 million. Mm-hmm. Um, that means tier three is probably going to be four million, three million. But you're saying that that only goes, that only drops down to six. So there. Oh no! So like a like a village. I was completely wrong. Completely wrong. Hold okay. up. See, this is what we do here at the Untranslatable right. Podcast. We get down to it. All right, one second. Here. And we learn the truth. Chad's been doing research about this for at this point what months? 
Mm-hmm. Just research personally, and here we are live for you guys. Most of it has been more research about my town. Um, Isn't that what we're talking about, right? Oh, we're talking about the China, regions. the tiers. Yeah. Right. So, so it looks like there's interesting. Uh, this is according to uh, Wikipedia and the top three. T- we'll see, but these say only say the top three tiers. Mm. So there's more. So there should be more. I thought there were like four or five, but I could be wrong. Let's see here. Uh, depending on whom or which organization you ask, there are now six, eight, fourteen, or even eighteen city tier categories in china this is according to chinabriefing.com mm. um and they also sometimes have half rankings so 1.5 tier 2.5 <laughs> so it really depends um but i believe the tiers a lot of it is based off of population how cool they also are also gdp as well yeah that makes sense mm-hmm. and uh so for example jared your tier one cities would be beijing mm-hmm. guangzhou shanghai and Shen, uh, shenzhen which are uh, huge cities. Then you have t- uh, tier two like uh, Chengdu, Chongqing, Hangzhou, uh, uh, places like this, uh, Tianjin. And then tier three, which is where I will be, you know, you have Wenzhou, uh, Jinan, a lot of different You're places. You're in Jinan. I'm in Jinan, correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. And Jinan is also the capital of the Shandong province. Okay. As well. So I'll be in the capital city there, which I think will be pretty cool. And uh, it, from what I've read and what I've heard, it is more of an industrial city, which I find interesting because that's where I came from in the Czech Republic as well. Uh, so that will be cool. And uh, it is Jinan is known as the city of springs. So there are a lot of beautiful waterways and springs hmm. and some really pretty sites over there. And uh, and the cool thing is the university I'll be teaching at, um, they have two campuses. They have one downtown, one further out. And I'll actually be living and working in the one further out. So it'll be interesting for me not being right smack dab downtown and being i'm about i've been told it's about a 40 minute commute by the shuttle bus provided by the university to go from the west campus to the downtown campus which is not bad with specifically when you have like transportation provided to you absolutely what is their public transportation system like well so if you're getting outside of the city i've heard mostly it's it's high speed railways and then around the city, you have buses. They have a ride-sharing app, uh, kind of like we have you know, Uber and Lyft over here. It's called DD. So that's not wrapped into their o- o- Uberall app that, that does everything. That is. Oh, is it really? That is, yeah. So the app Jared's talking about is called WeChat. So can we just do a whole conversation? We could do a whole episode about we WeChat. We will do a whole episode, but okay. we have to wait till I get over there. So you because, can actually use it. Right. Because <laughs> here, when you, I have WeChat on my phone right now, but here it's a very stripped down version. Right. And the key is with WeChat, at least if you use it over there and you want to access all of the bells and whistles of the app, you actually need to have a Chinese bank account. Mm. Because at least you can pay on the app you you know if you order a dd it'll go straight through the app and everything like that so can we just talk about i mean obviously we'll have a whole episode about mm-hmm. it once you've used it a bit right what are just some of the features that it has within it so it's a social media website social so well app, yeah it's not really a website but an app social media app oh you can't go on to wechat.com I don't know. Let's find out. I've never like it's tried. like Facebook or Twitter. It's like yeah, you, like I never go well, into Twitter pro- on my phone, but com. on my computer, Let's I mean. See. I'm trying it oh, right that's now. A good point. We'll we'll see. I don't think. Oh, oh wait. Here we go. So it's to download the app. WeChat.com okay. downloads the only app. an app. Right. Uh, and so yeah, so you can call, video call, uh, text message. They have all these cute little stickers. You know, like like gifts and emojis you can send to people, mm-hmm. and then. And then you also have, um, what else? Oh, they have stories, kind of like Instagram. Because here's here's the thing about um, media and social media in China, Jared. Uh, they, they, blo- they call it the Great Firewall of China. And they block, <laughs> that's what, at least that's what we call it in the West. And they block a lot of social media. So Instagram is not available. Facebook is not available. YouTube, Google, all these different things are not available. But... China does a great job of making their own equivalents to it. So WeChat, you know, they have stories like Instagram. Um, you can pay at people kind of like Venmo. Mm-hmm. It's a very versatile app. But we can talk more about it once I get over there and can really start exploring how it works and yeah. everything. Yeah, really explore its mm-hmm. its powers. Right. Okay. All right. So what do you know about – what sort of research have you been doing? Uh, like what does your research involve? What well, sort of sources? Well, so so this is – What do you type in? This is just going to completely blow – 
the term research out of the water here, but memes, a lot of it, all meme news. <laughs> it's just memes. No, but a lot of it's been YouTube videos of people who have lived there and they share their experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, some of it has been websites as well. Um, but there's a couple different channels on YouTube, and I try to find channels that are uh, Western teachers working at a university over there because my experiences will probably be more relatable to them in comparison to people who go over there and teach on an after school, you know, language school. Uh, and so, so it's a little bit different, but I mean, the main research I've been trying to do is just what is life like over there? Because, you know, going from the West to the East, I'm sure there will be plenty of culture shock that I'll be experiencing while I'm over there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to just mentally prepare myself. And then the other research I've been doing obviously is, um, you know, on health, right? So, uh, I had a meeting actually at a travel clinic a couple days ago, got a couple vaccinations and stuff. I got oh, a typhoid vaccination. Um, and then I have another one for, uh, actually for um, polio, a polio booster for adults because they've had a few cases mm. of polio over there you in know, China. I know, I hate to cut you off. Do you have any, mm-hmm. you got more? Nope, just, well, so those are the, the two I got, but other people sometimes will get malaria mm. uh, medication if you're in the South. I will not be in the South, so it's not as big of a problem. Also, Japanese encephalitis, which is also a mosquito-borne disease. Encephalitis can be fatal, but uh, I'm not insured right now, and I looked at the cost of the encephalitis shot. Take a That'll guess how it. much it was. Uh, $600. Well, so it was two rounds, and it was six hundred and twenty dollars. Oh, wow. So very good, Jared. <laughs> that was a total guess. And so, oh, no, no. thankfully, um, the wonderful registered nurse that was helping me out in the travel clinic said, "Snuck it to you." Uh, what? Sn- oh, I said, "Snuck it to you." That's right. Said, yeah. Hey, just, just give me just your lip real quick. That's, that's Under the right. table, I'm just going to prick you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, she said, "Get that over there," uh, because okay. they they have a, a lot of people over there get vaccinated for it as well. Well, it's funny that you bring up uh, health. And whatnot, because I actually I have a gift for you. Oh, really? I do. Yeah. And I, you, I oh, when you went downstairs, right. I hid it here, so it'd okay. be easy access. Uh, I want you to read that to the people. Oh, a zipper. A zi- I actually have a script for this. Okay, so read it. Uh Jared. Jared. Yeah, I'll just say Jared. A zipper, <laughs> uh, I can't even read this right now. A zip. A zithromycin five hundred milligram tablet. Take one tablet by mouth daily. As needed for travelers, diarrhea. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Commonly known as the Z pack. Yep, yep. And I have a, a script for this, and I have a script for a couple other things. Well, I need to go. Well, now you got three go. more. Uh, I got those when I went to uh, Tanzania. Nice. Not to brag, but never needed to use them. Nice. And what I've learned is, if if I, well, depending, I'm not a great cook, as most of you know. Jared definitely knows. Um, you betcha. Which means I'll probably be eating out more. But I've learned the trick Keep is... Keep one of these in your pocket. Right. Well, what I've learned the <laughs> trick is, is that if you go to a place and it's packed and a lot of locals are there, usually it's going to be more sanitary. The food quality is better. If you go somewhere and no one's eating there, you tend to want to stay away from those restaurants. Yeah, but what if it's a time of the day where like no place is busy? Then... Bring a sandwich. Good luck. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but the other thing is, too, uh, what the registered nurse told me is there's kind of, there's like a, like a three-part strategy. The first one is if you're dealing with fruits or vegetables, if you can peel it, you can eat it. Mm. If it's a fruit or vegetable you can't peel, don't eat it because there might be pesticides. You don't know where it was grown, who's touched it, all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, peel it. Uh, if you can boil it, you're fine. Or if you can cook it, similar to boiling, if you can cook it, right? Right. So... Um, So, yeah, so I'm hoping I won't need these either, but from what I've read and what I've heard, it is a problem, and a lot of locals suffer from it as well. Really? mm -hmm, I've read that... You would think they get used to it. Well, well, they do, but it just depends depends on, you know, what they eat. I've Mm. heard heard some people, the food, depending on where you are in China, can be so spicy, doesn't really matter if you're local or not, um, can tear you up. So so you have to be careful, (laughs) but... And that's one of the things I'm a little worried about, and I have to tell you, I hate to admit this, I am terrible with chopsticks. I am too. Terrible. Yeah, I am too. So we'll see how that goes. See, yeah, I'm terrible, but I can do it. But I, I'm I, I'm always not certain. I'm not going to say embarrassed, but I'm always like, this isn't good. But um, you're n- going to be in a place where not only will that, you'll have no other option. Right. But I feel like you'll the chances of getting judged for your terrible use of chopsticks goes up. Oh, absolutely. And they use chopsticks for everything. They do. Have you been practicing? 
a little bit, okay. but I've gotten discouraged and I've quit a couple times. So I need to you can't go quit through the path. I know you're still going there. Yep. <laughs> well, one, well, one thing I might do, which is kind of a cop out, is before I leave, I might buy a couple pairs. They have these chopsticks for children. that are connected at the top. Mm-hmm. So they oh, look kind of yeah. funny. So they're connected at the top. So basically, but it teaches your hand muscles how to properly you know you're supposed to so you hold the one stick here i'll use my right hand even though i'm a lefty so you use your your uh ring finger and your thumb and that's where the lower stick rests right and then you hold the top stick kind of like a pencil and the top so you move it like that right but my problem is like the the sticks they never like connect in this beautiful triangular pinch how you get the food right yeah there's always like a crossing happening when i do it yeah same here and i can get it to work but i can never i never have the control that i feel like i i should be having when i do it so what are sorts what are some of the like the popular foods in china go to sort of uh dishes oh man i mean that's a loaded question because they have so many different styles of cuisine in China. In, in Jinan? Right? But in, I'm talking about Jinan in where you're Jinan, going to be. I believe, I forget what the dish is called, but I think it's, they really love noodles mm. in Jinan. There's like a special here. We'll, we'll see if I can find Large it Large intestine you. of nine turns pig. Zin zin sa porridge. Zhang kui roast pork. These pictures are awful. <laughs> Yeah, they don't look great. <laughs> I think maybe it's because uh, maybe if I make it a full screen, it'll be better. So here you go. So this is according to Travel Oh, China that was my guide. fault. Sorry. So Jinan cuisine is famous for its scrumptious, aromatic, fresh, and pure dishes. Uh, it sounds like someone from Jinan wrote this. Uh, yeah, the I would methods say so. of cooking employed in the preparation of these local foods include deep frying, grilling, and uh, stir frying. But the food is not greasy. Nutritious soup. How is that possible? If is an important. It. I'm not sure. <laughs> Nutritious uh, soup is an important feature of Jinan cuisine. While shallot and garlic are widely used, love garlic. You like soup too. I do. So here you go, Jared. Uh, I don't know if I'd have this, and I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation. What do you mean you don't know if you'd have if you've had if, if you I would, would eat this? So here we go, Jared. <laughs> well, they have. I don't like this attitude. I already. believe it's called Tang Tang Su Liu, which is sweet and sour carp. Then you have... Oh, just because it's fish? Right, exactly. Then you have... Uh, Jeez, Chad, this Ju- is going to be a da Chang, which is fried pork. Would you eat that? I'd eat that. And then you have Jinan roast duck, are also very popular Would you local. Eat duck? Yeah, I've had duck before. Duck's good. Okay. It has to be cooked right, but yeah, we'll see. Mm-hmm. So, so yes. And then a uh, very famous dish in Jinan as well is they have these like really good stuffed steam buns. Now, I've seen some YouTube videos of uh, these being prepared, and it looks awesome. Uh, how they do this. Uh, and then they also have street food there as well. Um, now, that's where you got to get extra careful, right? Correct. Yeah. You can go either way with that. Exactly. Exactly. And and the, the problem is, from what I've heard, is you know, it just looks so delectable and smells mm-hmm. so good. Um, but I've also heard, too, that for most Westerners, it takes, it takes their stomachs a couple months to become adjusted. And then they're usually okay eating street food and things like this. I've also heard, too, you know, with the street food over there, as long as you can tell that it was cooked fairly recently and it's fresh you're fine but if it's been sitting out in the sun for three four hours you know that's when the bacteria can grow on the food right. and you can get sick that's how i feel when i go to mcdonald's you can tell when those <laughs> right. fries are like damn it right they're like soggy and yeah gross. like give me the fresh crisp <laughs> ones come on exactly so yeah i'm looking forward to trying the cuisine mm-hmm. um and uh what do they drink over there uh boiled water is a like they they really like hot water over there just plain boiled water I had a babysitter when I was younger that drank just boiled, Mm -hmm. you know, water. Right. Now, I will tell you, though, Jared, the thing I'm also a little afraid of is you uh, really should not drink the tap water in China. It can be very polluted. There's bacteria. Now, you can boil it and use it, you know, to brush your teeth or wash your dishes or whatever. But, you know, I'm so used to we have it really good here Mm -hmm. uh, where we live. And, you know, I drink tap water all the time. You know, I'd, I'll be in the shower and I'll be drinking shower water. And I was warned by the <laughs> nurse. She was like, do not drink the water in the shower when yeah. you're in there. Yeah, I um, yeah, I actually, I'm so privileged here, especially in Michigan. I guess not if you're in Flint. But um, the water is so good here that I, the my uh, house that I live in now came with the Brita filter on like the little sink thing. And I just got in my way whenever I was trying to clean mm-hmm. dishes. And I could not get it off for the life of me. And I pried it off the other day okay. with uh, scissors and a... Uh, <laughs> I would love to see this. And a wrench. All just so... <laughs> dude, I actually... Like, that's why I have these marks here. Oh, jeez. Okay. But uh, and, anyway, 
And, and it's just because uh, I'm privileged enough to know that I could take off this filter and my water would still be fine. I'm like, this, gets, this filter that cleans up my water just gets in my way. Right. Um, yeah. And there are, I, I think when you go to a country where you have to be careful with the water, you don't realize how little attention you actually pay to to that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, like even I told you when I was in Tanzania, like, you know, when you do stuff like rinse out your mouth, uh, you, after you brush your teeth, you just don't you just don't think about it. Like without right. thinking uh, once or twice, I would just stick my head under the faucet and be like, oh oh oh, oh god no! Right this now is I'm it. gonna die. Where's my Z pack? Right, but I didn't need it. There you go. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it though. It'll be quite the adventure, and um, yeah, I'm the the nice thing is though too. I've already been in contact with some of uh, the people at my university. My foreign affairs officer uh, is amazing. She's the one who helped me get my Z visa, which is the work visa that you need. A Chinese lady or American? Yeah, she's Chinese. Okay. Uh huh. She has been great, incredibly helpful with everything. Um, has you know answered all my questions tenfold and been really really helpful with the entire process. Mm-hmm. And let me just tell you, Jared, the process for getting a Z visa is not as easy as I think getting visas for other countries. So what I had to do first. First off, what is a Z visa? Z visa is a work visa for China. And this is okay. for, I think there, there are obviously different types. I believe the traveler's visa, I think, is an F visa. If you were to apply mm. for an F visa. And what I read on numerous sites before I even took the job was make sure you go there with the legitimate visa. Because what some more sketchy places will do, universities most likely don't do this, but some of these more smaller privately owned language schools will do this is they'll bring you over on a tourist visa, and that's illegal. You can't make money in China on a tourist visa. And basically, then they have all the leverage over you as, as the company. Right, because right? you're sort of under the, getting paid under the table. Yeah, you're at their mercy, right? Mm-hmm. And so, so it can cause a lot of problems. So make sure anyone out there, if you go to China, make sure you get the proper work visa. And so what I had to do was, uh, first I had to send over to my foreign uh, affairs officer at the university, I had to send over... Uh, two basically copies showing that I have you know been employed and I have work experience because the new laws in China it used to be if you had a bachelor's degree in, in anything and you were a native English speaker you could go over there and work as an English teacher even at some colleges and universities but now they've made the regulations a little bit more difficult and what you need to do then is you have to show that you have worked for at least two years um, in order to get there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to do that. So I had to ask for some letters from my employers. Um, and then after that, I also had to I had to do a medical check for my program. So I also sent that to my foreign uh, affairs officer. Uh, medical check, uh, proof of employment. Then I had to get my uh, diploma, apostled, certified. Whoa, 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 whoa. Apostled. Yep. Apostle Paul. Apostled at the <laughs> <laughs> apostled at the Peace secretary with of state. You. What? Well, I don't know what that. I don't know what that is. Apostle is like it's like a. I thought just, that was a Bible person that uh, follows Jesus. He he is, but no. If you apostle something, it just means you. Uh, it's like a legal stamp saying this is a legitimate document. Oh, it's like kind of like getting it notarized or exactly, something. exactly. Okay. Well, and I also had to get it notarized. So Which I had to seems get it. so antiquated, doesn't it? Getting right. something notarized. Right. Well, so I had to get apostled, notarized, and then I sent it to the Chinese embassy through a visa agent, which okay. I had to pay for, uh, or the Chinese consulate in Chicago. Um, shout out to Sean at China Visa Solutions. He was fantastic. <laughs> Super helpful. For all your China visa needs. That's right. If you're going to Chicago, <laughs> I don't know if they have other branches elsewhere. But so anyways, so then what happened was a week, not a week later, a few days later, we got the diploma and a criminal background check. Uh-oh, that sort of stuff got tough for you, right? Right, right, because I have such a <laughs> criminal background. And so... Uh, yeah, but so we had to get all those documents, and then I s- scanned those and sent those to my uh, FAO, Foreign Affairs Officer, okay. over there. And then she was able then with those documents to apply for the work, like allowance to work or invitation to work through the foreign, uh, like foreigners work office over in Jinan. And so then I got I got these uh, two. One was in English, one was in Chinese. It's pretty cool to look at the Chinese document. Mm-hmm. It has the official stamp of the office over there. And then I had to print that out, take that to the consulate in Chicago with the application form. Jeez. And yeah, so it was quite quite a trip. Um, but all said and done, I've got it. You did it. Yep. And Hallelujah. So, that's right. 
I was worried I wouldn't be able to get it in time and would have to wait a few days and miss orientation, but thankfully it all worked so out you, okay. So you couldn't go to orientation without your visa? No, you can, as, a, as an American, you cannot get into China without a visa. No, I mean, you couldn't go to your orientation in D.C. without Not a visa? Not in D.C., I have another orientation in Beijing. Oh, gotcha. When I get there. Gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. All right, I think we, let's, let's talk about the teaching aspect of it. Okay, let's do it. So there, I assume there are going to be a few differences. For one, mm-hmm. I remember you telling me that it tends to be a more formal sort of situation. Yes, sir. So what's your uh, what's your wardrobe looking like? What do you how, how do you think you're gonna? What's your packing technique? We I love talking about packing techniques here at the Untranslatable right. Podcast. It's important. That's for sure. Well, so so the key is. So I'm good either, thing is you're not going to buy anything while you're there. That's not true. That's a lie. <laughs> that's a straight up lie right there. But so what what I will be doing is I believe I'll be bringing one suit, one uh, like a blazer and probably matching set of pants or slacks. Mm-hmm. So it kind of looks like a suit, and I'll be teaching in those. And then days when I'm not teaching, if I'm doing any consultations with students or office hours, I'll probably wear a polo and khakis or dress slacks or something like that since I'm not actually teaching. Um, And then I do plan on getting a custom tailored suit while I'm over there. Okay. Because I think from what I've heard, they cost anywhere from... I think two to six hundred dollars, mm-hmm. which is pretty pretty good. I would say for a tailored suit, yeah, you can made pick all the materials. Specifically to you, and I already know I want to get like a dark blue, okay, like a navy blue because it goes with a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, I'm playing. Have you looked into the materials? Not yet. No, okay. I, I have. No you got to go there and feel them with exactly. your hands. Exactly. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so it's a more formal situation. Mm-hmm. Do you like that? Do you not like that? I do. You know, because well, now it depends on your university. And, and I've heard that most foreign teachers don't have to wear... Now, when I say I'm wearing a suit, I'm kind of lying because I won't be wearing a tie. But you're wearing the suit without yeah, the tie. without the tie. Right. Yeah. I, think th- uh, I think that's fair to say. Right. Because I've heard a lot of, at least Chinese professors over there, tend to wear a suit, maybe even a suit and tie. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just want to be... Uh, I want to be respected. You know, I want to be able to respect yeah, my students and have right. them respect me. Damn right. That's right. And so, <laughs> you know, it obviously going in a laid back vibes tank top uh, <laughs> is probably not going to demand that respect that a suit will, or even just a nice pair of slacks mm-hmm. and, and, you know, a blazer, a sports coat. So, so yeah. What, what's the, uh, what's the classroom vibe like? Like what's the relationship between teacher and student? I'll tell you when I get there. I really am not sure. I know it won't be like the Czech Republic because right. you're not going to be getting drunk with them. No. Probably okay. not. Okay. Probably not, no. But they're also older, which is surprising. Now you're teaching straight up university students. They are older, but I think at least... Now, this is coming from my experience working with Chinese students in the States. They tend to keep a more distance relationship with their teachers. Right. Because it's more professional, too. Exactly, exactly. And I'm okay with that. You know, I'll, mm-hmm. I'm sure I'll be able to meet some other people. You know, where I was living in the Czech Republic, it was either my colleagues who were great, but, you know, most of them were older and had families... Or right. my students who were a lot younger, and so so it was I different. Was trying to rage, right? Like exactly. These kids. That's right. But Jared, I do have my teaching schedule, and I'll show it to you. Okay. So it looks pretty great. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I will be teaching. Let's well, let's count them here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven classes in the week, and you nothing on Friday. Nothing on Fridays, and Monday is actually every other Monday. Oh. So I have a very open teaching schedule, which is great because I hope to use this time, um, one, to explore Jinan. Mm-hmm. Number two, I would like to also set up a couple things at the university, like a conversation table um, where students can come and chat and, you know, have do they encourage informal. that or is it just something you want to do on your own? So they, they have that at a lot of universities. I think it, at ours... Like a Sprachtisch that we had for German. Exactly, exactly. And the whole reason why I want to do this is just to give... St- to kind of break down those formal barriers with mm-hmm. students because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'll be teaching methodology and, and spoken English. And the spoken English, I can get into some informal language probably, but, you know, the teaching methodology is all about, you know, how to teach and things like this, right? How do you teach language communicatively and all sorts of other things. So hopefully we'll have some good teacher edition episodes coming your way once I get over there as well. Yeah, it seems like this this teaching style and what you're teaching is a little more focused Absolutely. A little more formal than mm-hmm. like before it was more just in Czech Republic. It seemed like it was more just teaching more conversation. Absolutely. But this is more formally teaching people how to. It is. It really is. And I'm looking forward to that because. Now, how do you do that? Now, I'm sorry. How do you do that without also concerning yourself that you're getting too in the weeds of that grammar teach, teaching? 
Well, thankfully, I'm not teaching grammar. I'm teaching methodology. So there's okay. a big difference. So methodology is basically, you know, how... Um, well, here, let's just let's just look up a definition that I can give you because that okay. will be easier. Um, Please. But, but basically, a, oh, a system of methods using a particular area of study or activity. So basically, how should you teach, right? Um, you know, what what is... We did a teacher's Are you teaching future on, teachers? I am. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. okay. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. And, and you know... So you're teaching them how to teach English? Correct, yeah. Not even... Te- you're not even teaching them English? No, n- not really. I'm sure it depends on their skill levels. Right. It really depends on their skill levels. But I believe these are... Yeah, so these are the junior classes. So, so they've been through a couple of years of university already. And so I think for them, yeah, I won't have to really do much English teaching. But, you know, how do you manage a classroom? How do you prepare a lesson oh, plan? What? That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be a lot of fun. Oh, that's very different than yeah. what you've been doing before. And I'm really excited for it. And the other great thing about this year is I will have opportunities to do workshops at different universities. Mm-hmm. So I'm planning on going to Shanghai, Guangzhou, Chengdu, Shenzhen, all these different places all over China, which will be great as well. That's right. You better believe it. <laughs> um, I'm looking into a more portable interface so I can bring my stuff with me mm. uh, a little bit easier. But yeah, so it'll it'll really be great. And I'm excited to meet all my students, get to know them and, uh, you know, have just have a lot of great classes with them. It'll be fun. Yeah. No, that's super exciting. That's cool. Um, it's, it's, it's cool to, to have like this level of versatility within sort of the same field of English teaching and different mm-hmm. ways to approach it. And um, I'm interested to see how it goes and uh, what sort of new podcast topics we get out of this. Um, have you started learning the language, sir? A little bit. Uh, what, 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 do you, what do you use? Uh, right now, it's just, I'm going to be honest, man. I've been, I'm surprised. For the Czech Republic, I started way earlier trying to learn Czech, basic stuff, downloaded a bunch of different stuff. Mm-hmm. I've been a little lazy this summer. Now, does it have anything to do with just the comfort of being home and not really having any real responsibilities? 100%. Or, or, or <laughs> I'm still going to ask the or, does it have anything to do with the fact that Chinese seems so much more o- o- overwhelming? Good question. Even though Czech is a pretty overwhelming language to learn, too. <laughs> yes, it is. But yes, Chinese is. is just overwhelming in the sense that, you know, the uh, it's a whole different alphabet. Um, it, it, re- I mean, I guess it, re- it requires different skills of mm-hmm. language speaking than we're used to. It's so does Czech, but I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm right now. I'm more concerned about basic phrases and speaking and listening. Mm-hmm. I don't care as much right now about the characters. Probably as I should. I should probably care more about it right now. But I'm sure with WeChat, you can translate just by putting your camera up to stuff. A, a lot of well, well, I, I do have a couple apps okay. actually. If if I had my, we can, we'll talk about apps. We'll do another episode. Yeah, we should do a whole episode on yeah, apps. We will, we will, because <laughs> I got can, plenty more to ask you right. here too. Because we could, we could probably even do one about one about WeChat, another one about apps I got yeah. before I went. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to do, do that before I go, maybe. Okay. Um, and then we can talk more about the Chinese learning as well, because right now, honestly, man, it hasn't been much. I've been listening to, I think it's called like learn china pod or something like that um so so yeah so i've been doing that and then just kind of watching some random youtube videos of people Mm -hmm. i will say this though any youtube videos i've seen with um people from china it does tend to be way more traditional kind of grammar based oh yeah like this yeah and uh you know i I don't really care that much about the grammar it's not (laughs) like i'm trying to impress anybody with my perfect you know yeah but it's not about impressing people you're a teacher and these teachers are going to be teaching grammar that's true that's a good point so obviously it's not about being like well look no one knows how to use whom as good as i do right it's about uh so have you um you know forget the culture differences and all that stuff but have you uh like what sort of at pre-preparation have you or pre, that's kind of a i don't need that's kind of a don't need the pre there just the preparation yeah what's the uh, word i'm looking for redundant pre-preparation oh yeah what sort of preparation have you done in to learn how to teach this this uh stuff like the the methodology classes and everything yeah yeah like what preparation have you done to teach that so i've been going back I and i have speak, a clearly. treasure trove what am i doing to prepare for my lessons when i get over there a lot of it has been looking at the treasure trove of materials I have from graduate school, mm-hmm. but the methodology course, it's in a few different sections, and I'll be teaching that with other teachers. So we'll be on the same schedule. The students will have to take the same final, all, all, all of that stuff. So basically, 
for the methodology course, I'm waiting till I get over there to meet with the teachers and see, you know, what, what they, what are our objectives, what are our benchmarks and what kinds of things are they teaching? And I just hope that, um, we'll all be able to stick to the same schedule. No problem. I'm a little concerned about that just because I've never taught there before. I don't know how fast or how slow, you know, the students are with going through the materials and everything, but I'm really excited about it. And, uh, it will be a new challenge. It will be fun. For sure. For sure. This is exciting. Um, have you thought about sort of, uh, you did a lot of research into the city. You did a lot, any sort of research into nightlife, leisure activities? I have a little bit. And what's really cool is near where I will be living, there's actually a, uh, a music bar called Banjo Music Bar in Genome. Okay. I'll pull it up so you can see it. If I'll you pull want it up. To. You just keep telling me about right. it. And, and what I know is they, they have a, I think they have live music almost every night of the week. Oh, and, that's nice. And if it's within walking distance, I might become a, a regular there, going there and watching the live music. What's the, what's the uh, like, um, nightlife vibe like uh, in China or Jinan specifically? Well, I've heard Jinan is, doesn't have the best nightlife. Okay. Um, I've heard Beijing and Shanghai are great. Um, but I'm, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, in terms of nightlife... That uh, banjo bar just caught my attention, and uh, I thought it was cool that they have live music. So yeah, so I'm hoping to check that out. Another interesting thing about China in general is right now they are kind of having this big boom of coffee culture. They didn't used to have coffee over in China, and now there's a lot of these coffee places popping up. So one of my uh, one of my future fellows, um, she lives in the next town over from me, and she was telling me that. Uh, it's hard for her to get certain food. So occasionally if she's near Jinan, she'll stop there and get stuff. Mm. Um, so, hmm. so I'm looking forward to meeting her and I'll meet her tomorrow in DC as well. And, uh, it'll be good to, you know, kind of get some feelers, you know, advice about some places to go, things to do, things to see. And I've also been fortunate to have been put in touch by a few of my colleagues at my university. And they've also given me some tips and things. But the cool thing is, well, maybe it's cool. Maybe it's not cool. You can take it how you want. But I will be the only foreign teacher living near West Campus. Okay. All the other ones, the university actually bought a hotel. And the Western teachers live in this like newly renovated hotel, which is near downtown, which is near the other campus. And so the way it works is I, in theory, will be very close uh, to where I'm working, ideally within walking distance from my apartment to the campus. So that'll be great. Okay, so you just brought up a good point what is your living situation like so i'll be living in my own apartment oh that's nice yep in the in no roommates no roommates nope uh in the western part of jinan near near what they call west campus and uh that's that's really all i know about it so far mm -hmm. you don't obviously you don't have to bring you're not responsible for any of the furnishings or nope. anything nope and and i've looked online before i moved over there just to see and there are a lot of pre-furnished apartments over there hmm okay Interesting. And you do have a, as they say, call it a Western-style toilet. I do, yes. Now, what about the school? The school itself, it's, uh, I, I believe... I mean, what kind of toilet do they have? No idea. I haven't... Didn't ask. We'll find out. I got to work on my squats, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure, but we'll see. Now, you might not have a relationship with your students where you go out together, but you might uh, have a very good bathroom relationship with some of them. <laughs> Can you help me up? I fell over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That would be terrible. Oh, man, that would be bad. Give me a hand. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, though. Okay. So what are some tactics to make friends with the locals that you've at least... I, I assume you've looked into this, right? Actually, no. I, hmm. I have not. But from what I've been told, I mean, basically, if you're not in a first tier city, as a Westerner, you tend to stick out, right? I mean, I'll have this beard. You're not going to see yeah, many the beard Chinese that's going to do it, not the, the blue uh, eyes. white face. <laughs> right, the white face, <laughs> the, the lighter brown hair, not black hair. Yeah. Um, if but, you're a blonde, they love you. I know, right? Maybe I should bleach it before I go. That would look terrifying. <laughs> that would look so terrifying. But not um, the eyebrows. <laughs> right. Just, and, or the beard. Just blonde oh, hair. No. That would look so bad. But um, <laughs> yeah, and really, I think, well, I think the issue is I am worried about the language barrier um, because from what I've heard, once you get out of the first tier cities, there's a big drop in people who do speak English. Obviously, younger people will be able to speak English now, depending on how comfortable they are. Speaking it is a different story. And I right. encounter that in the Czech Republic as well. But I think it'll, it'll be good. And 
I think that at least the way my personality is, uh, I think it'll be fairly easy to, to meet people and make friends over there just because I'm a genuinely curious person and, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll enjoy attempting my small limited Chinese vocabulary with mm-hmm. them as well. Mama hoo-hoo. And that's the best way to learn. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm the thing that I am most afraid of though, is just the things that you can't really prepare for and don't know what right. to expect. Right. That's always what it is. What's yeah. out of your control. Exactly. But I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. Okay. All right. How has your, how have your friends and family responded? It's been, it's been interesting. I've had, I've had kind of a, it's been a mixed bag of feelings. I've had, and, and even in the Czech Republic when I was telling my students, because a lot of my students were hoping I'd come back to my school. Mm-hmm. And I loved teaching there and, you know, I would have loved to come back. But, um, you know, sometimes you just need a change in life and, yeah. uh, you know, and so I thought this would be a decent career move as well. And so uh, some people are like, oh, that's great. We're really excited for you. Uh, my colleagues at my school were really supportive about it, which was great. Um, That's good. Th- they're all wonderful, wonderful people, and I miss them dearly. Um, but yeah, so they were great about it. A lot of my students, it was either, oh, that's awesome, or someone like, oh, really? You're, Why would you go there? there? Right. Um, but, you know, it's it's like anywhere in the world. You know, I think we only hear about the bad stuff that goes on there and not all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with over there. You know, they hear negative things about the states and, and yeah it's not like we always have shootings happening here right <laughs> God. bad timing a, yeah another, another <laughs> story for another time but um yeah so it, it'll be fun though and a lot of people have been supportive i think some people definitely give me the googly eyes and they're like what huh right. china you're yeah, going there yeah. um and a lot of people i've had some people ask me some pretty ignorant questions as well like oh mm. are you excited for the sushi over there and i'm like ah uh, that's that's japanese but okay do they have cars there <laughs> right <laughs> yeah um but you know we'll see and i'm i'm really curious to see what the year has in store mm. for me and for this podcast and it will be a wild ride that's for sure yeah 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 um it will be a wild ride um let's see i want to see if there's anything else uh, i want to ask you we've got we did some good work here and obviously we'll be talking about this more so let's mm-hmm. just leave it there let's let's move on let's do it i think it's time for some tunes jared what do you think i agree i agree and you know we always talk about here at the untranslatable podcast a great way to learn a new language mm-hmm. is by immersing yourself into good music absolutely and why not start finding that good music uh here at the untranslatable podcast that's right uh give that a play so you and i can hear it you guys can hear it because we uh, agree with um the uh copyright laws of the united states of america or we try but this is by a rapper from china named mc jin Mm -hmm. and this is from a uh soundtrack for a sorry it's uh for the movie the foreigner by uh it's a jackie chan movie Mm -hmm. and i gotta say man the beat straight slaps yes and it's cool too because he raps in english and in chinese and the English is pretty damn good, I would say. Uh, he's American. MC Jin's American? Is a, is a f- Asian-American solo rapper to be signed to a major label in the United States. Born in Miami, Florida. Ah, uh, later lived in New York and Hong Kong. He lived, okay, because okay, he clearly speaks Chinese, because the first right. song we heard of his was uh, in Chinese. Interesting. Right. Yeah, yeah, but in this song, slaps. he does both. He mm-hmm. goes back and forth. Which is also a great way to learn, I think, songs where they do both, even if mm-hmm. they're not saying the same thing. Right. I still think and in the useful. music video, there are some awesome clips from the movie. The movie yes. looks action-packed, as usual, with Jackie Chan. I mean, Jackie Chan, one of the greatest action heroes uh, in oh, the for world. Sure. For sure. So, yeah, uh, it's a great song. I wish I could tell you guys more about what he's saying in Chinese, but I have no idea yet. Yeah. But hopefully that will change within the near future. <laughs> check it out. MC Jin Zero. Uh, and we will post it on our Twitter, Untranslatable One, and our YouTube channel, Untranslatable Podcast. That's right. For your listening pleasure. That's for sure. You betcha. Well, Jared, I uh, after uh, this episode and the next one, I've decided it's time for a new segment, which will be Chinese Word of the Pod. Mm, this is exciting. <laughs> None, none today. None in the next episode, but the following we will That's get fair. started. That's fair. With some because I need to build up my vocabulary before mm-hmm. I can do that. Um, but yeah, do you have? You don't have any Spanish words for us today either, do you? <laughs> How dare you? Oh, do you? Okay, I do. great. I do have a Spanish okay. word, and it's expat, expatriado. 
Expatriate. Expat. There you go. There you All go. Right. Good job. Parada. Very or nice. expatriada for a female. Female. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, Jared, hey, that's what you would be, right? Maybe. You never know. Did you just assume my gender? Oh, I didn't mean specifically the uh, the gender. I just meant you'll be an expatriate. Yes, I will. <laughs> I was be. like, I'm confused. <laughs> I, I was as well. Yeah, I so will were be. Were you an technically expat. an expatriate in um, in the Czech Republic as well? You never mm-hmm. called yourself that though. It's because I figured I'd be back here eventually. I don't know. Yeah, but expatriates co- uh, com- are allowed to come back. Are they? No. Yeah, they definitely <laughs> are. That's for sure. Well, Jared, I decided I didn't want to do any China jokes just because I find <laughs> a lot of them are stereotypical. Oh, yeah. They're a little racist, a little xenophobic. But I do have a funny pickup line with the word China in it. So, okay. Jared, I'm going to flex a little game on Jared right now and see see if I Uh-oh. can see if I can uh, impress him. Here we go, Jared. Slipping on gator piss. Are you from China? I am not. Because I'm trying to get that number. Ooh. I don't even know what to press. <laughs> All right. There we go, everybody. That's a first here at the Untranslatable I'm Podcast. speechless. <laughs> He's speechless and dropless. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> I found one. There we go. Perfect. <clears throat> but yeah, so we hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. And I think a quote to wrap everything up is um, gone by, which is uh, Chinese for like cheers. Mm-hmm. Gone by to a new adventure. Uh, I'm going to miss Michigan dearly. Going to miss my friends here. Going to miss you dearly as well, buddy. I'm going to miss you too. We'll be we'll still be talking on, on the pod quite often. That's true. I won't miss but, you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So gone by to new adventures. I'm looking forward to it and uh, looking forward to having all of our untranslatablers out there checking it out as you well. Betcha. So let us know what you thought about this episode on Twitter, untranslatable1. You can also uh, not slide into well. You can slide into the DMs on Instagram. You betcha. You can also check out all sorts of photos, clips, and other miscellaneous stuff on our Instagram, Untranslatable Podcast. If you are like, hmm, I want to flex, use some of these untranslatables at our next party or little soiree. Check out our website, untranslatablepodcast.com. It's fantastic. Ta-da. And lastly, please let us know. Give us some feedback. What can we do to make this podcast better? Obviously, with an accompanying five-star review on iTunes and Stitcher, it would mean the world to us, and we would really appreciate it. So, as we say here at the Untranslatable Podcast, Yakuyame, 